Now, we can talk about the decimal system with 10 different symbols. And we use these 10 symbols to make up all of the numbers. And it's easy to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But did you ever think about or try to imagine really big numbers and how the decimal system represents those? Last summer when I was on vacation at Morrow Beach sitting around with not much to do, I thought I'd make a little video to show you how numbers work and help you try to imagine big numbers. Let's watch that now. Have you ever walked down a beach and looked at all the pebbles and debris and thought about counting it? Well, this time I thought I'd give it a go. So I organized some of these beach pebbles into numbers that we can identify. For example, here are 10 rocks. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And that was pretty easy. How about 100? Here's a square of 100 rocks. Again, that's 10 tens. Not a big problem for us to imagine. We've all had experience with 100. What about more than 100? 1,000 is 10 sets of 100. So I've organized that on the beach from the rocks I found along the shore. So here we are, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 sets of 100. What about a million? That would mean a thousand groups, just like this group. Pardon me for not doing that one for you, but close your eyes and visualize this group of a thousand repeated a thousand times. That would be a million. OK, now let's take a look at some numbers and see how we take them apart. Let's look at some big numbers. For example, let's take a look and see what this number means. We have nine ones, two tens, no one hundreds. Now, you see, what a number is worth depends on its position in the larger number. And so if we have something that's worth a hundred, but there are no hundreds, then we use a zero to hold that place. Let's continue. We have five thousands, seven ten thousands, one one hundred thousand, and two millions. Let's break apart another number. In this case, we have no ones, five tens, six hundreds, nine thousands, two ten thousands, eight hundred thousands, and three millions. So going from right to left, each numeral or digit is worth, in effect, ten times what the one to the right of it is worth. Now, we use that in naming numbers. So let's look at our system for figuring out the names of particularly very large numbers. So there's a number. If I ask you, what's that number? Tell me its name. You go, wow, I've got to figure that out. So we have a way of doing it. We start at the right and then count over from the right. Three, one, two, three. And then we stick a space in and we put a comma there. So it, just, it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't change the value of the number. It's just a way of breaking things up so that when we look at a number, we can instantly determine what its value is by looking at the groups of three. Anyway, we continue to count over from the right in groups of three and put a comma in every third one. And then finally, way over at the left, after you run out of threes, you just have whatever is left over in this case. So now we start looking at how this would work. So we have two ones, eight tens, four one hundreds. Those are the ones. Now we move up into the thousands, and we have 6,000, 3 ten thousands, 900 thousands. Now from the thousands, we move up into the millions. So we have 8 million, 4 ten millions, and 400 millions. And now we start getting up into what 
economists call the real numbers, we have eight billions and seven ten billions in this number. Let's look at another one and break it apart. So we have seventy eight billion four hundred forty eight million nine hundred thirty six thousand four hundred eighty two. So you see, I count by groups of three. Let's look at another one. And I put those zeros in green specifically to indicate that there are placeholders and there's no value there, but we need to have them because if that number collapsed together, it would be a different number. Let's look at naming it. Five million, no hundred, twenty-eight thousand. And again, that zero is there to indicate there are no hundred thousands. 300 no teens and five and of course you don't say the no's you just write it down and you say five million twenty eight thousand three hundred and five now where this is really handy knowing the names of numbers is writing out checks let's go look at a check writing application so Here's a bill that I've gotten from the power company, um, $12,456,089, pay up or else. So I need to write a check for that amount that I've started to do here because I need to know what that is. So I've written $12,456,089. Etc. Of course, you can't set etc. to the power company, but you get the general idea that in a check you need to know both the number and how to write the number. So there's at least something useful you can do with this skill that you're going to develop. Okay, then often it's useful in doing various kinds of math to write numbers in their expanded form. In other words, we've taken units, tens, and so forth, and put them together. Now we're going to do this, take a number and pull it apart into its component forms. So let's look at 2,678. Okay, so we have 2,000s and 600s and 7 tens and 8. Let's see if we can write that just a little bit more mathematically and less using words. So we have 2,678, so we'll say two thousands, and that x is a time signal. In other words, we have two times a thousand, six hundreds, seven tens, and eight ones. So we have 2,678, and we can write it this way because it's two one thousandths and or plus six one hundredths and or plus seven tens and eight. And this is what we call expanded form. So it's useful to understand what goes on underneath numbers by writing them in this kind of an expanded form. Let's look at another example. It's a little bit longer. 304,123. So let's break that up. We have three hundred thousands, no ten thousands, four one thousands, one one hundred, two tens, and a three. And this is 304,123 3, in expanded form. And you might wonder what use this is, and it turns out that if you're writing very large numbers, there's actually a shorthand notation which is called exponents, or writing things to powers, that this expanded notation lends itself to very well. And when scientists write very large numbers or very small numbers, it helps to be able to break these things up in the way we just did, and we'll see this more in the units to come. Thank you.